Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, in his at his, uh, in between us, hello and welcome. My name's Dan, welcome to another Pack Reports, The Bad Bits. It's Monday, September 21st, 2020. Finally, I get to report on some justice. Maybe not the justice deserved, but justice nonetheless. David Eckpey was on remand in HMYOI Polmont, one of the largest young offenders institutes in Scotland, for a crime which he was later acquitted of. However, that's not the justice I'm talking about. Whilst now 18-year-old Ekpe was serving his remand, 20-year-old Kyle Park, another guest at the facility who was in there for raping four schoolgirls and mutilating a fifth with a razor blade, leaving her permanently disfigured, made the decision during a pool game to call Nigerian-born Ekpe a nigger and a black bastard. So Ekpe battered the sick cunt with a pool cue. Normally, you would expect Ekpe to have been given a custodial sentence for the attack. However, this is where some justice seems to finally prevail, which beats the normal outcome of judges dealing with rapists and paedophiles. Appearing in court last week over the attack on Parks, the court heard how the incident occurred at 8.20pm on April the 4th last year, 2019. Prosecuting Christina Kelly said, Officers on duty were alerted to an ongoing incident and observed the accused repeatedly striking Carl Park about the head and body with a pool cue. He ignored instructions to desist and continued to strike him. He did comply with the instruction when one of the prison officers drew her baton and he was restrained, relocated and placed on report. The Crown accepts that there was provocation in this incident. When he was interviewed, he explained that he had snapped when he and Mr Park were paying, playing pool due to Mr Park having continually called him a black bastard and a nigger. A costly decision for Parks, as he was left with a laceration to his head, which needed gluing together. Defence solicitor Ryan Sloan said Ekpe had come to the UK from Nigeria at the age of 11. He said he was still only 16 when the incident took place. He was understandably upset and angered at what had been said. He is a first offender and he had to leave school when he was remanded. He is now back in full-time education, gaining his qualifications with a view to going to university and he hopes to work in the medical sector. Sheriff Livingston told Ekpe, one, there's the admitted provocation. Two, there's the fact that you're a first offender, which is not usually the case when people who are appearing in front of me having committed an offence in Pomont. And three, there's the fact that you spent 10 months of your life in Pomont for an offence which ultimately you were found not guilty of. In these particular circumstances, I'm prepared to deal with the matter by way of a community payback order as an alternative to custody. Sheriff Livingston ordered Ekpe to carry out just 180 hours of unpaid work, adding, I almost invariably impose custodial sentences on people who assault other people with pork cues in Palmont, but in your case, these are quite exceptional circumstances. And yeah, I'm as shocked as you are that he wasn't locked up again for the assault and the dirty cunt rapist being let out. But the fact the judge in this case made what I would consider to be a decent choice is deserving of being added to this report. We see it all too many times that the people who don't deserve protection get the protection while the others suffer. In this case, Ekpe was, I think, treated fairly by the court. But Parks, the cretin has currently raped four girls and raped and disfigured a fifth, was still let off pretty lightly in my opinion as even though he admitted the rapes and the assault between 2014 and 2018, Wise and High Court Lady Wise said he was set out to humiliate and degrade his victims and showed significant hostility to members of the opposite sex, he was only jailed for six years, even though he was already in prison for a sexual assault of another 15-year-old girl. Maybe they should start giving mandatory minimum sentences for each rape or child sex offence. I mean, they want to push minimum terms for public who assault the police when they get a scuffed knee while arresting someone. So why then not do the same for people who actually carry out abhor abhorrent crimes? Another story I would consider to be a win is this one. And although this is not about the offender being a public servant or in a position of authority, this is more about the judge's reaction to the offence. And as we don't hear it enough, I feel that giving the judges who appear to be doing the right thing some recognition is something I would like to be doing more of. Liverpool Crown Court heard how a 30-year-old filthy cunt paedophile gave money and gifts to a young girl in order to have her perform sexual acts on him during a seven-day trial. 
Anthony Bloor groomed the young victim by giving sweets and cash in exchange for keeping quiet about his sexual abuse. Bloor gains the victim's trust and convinced her to touch his dick before escalating the abuse over a perverted two-year campaign. As the sick behaviour progressed in Southport, he convinced her to wear a school skirt and then little clothing or no underwear so that he could touch her more easily. On two occasions, he showed her pornography to convince her that the behaviour was normal and to give her tips on what to do. During the trial, it was heard how Bloor would send coded text messages to his victim asking for a favour or help every time that he had the urge to abuse her and then convince the girl to delete the messages from her device. But he was caught out after the dickhead failed to delete them from his own. After being arrested, he denied the accusations and attempted to blame his victim, saying that she had acted provocatively towards him and made him feel uncomfortable. Bloor has continually denied the offences during his trial, but was, after seven days, found guilty. Judge Louise Brandon, you, madam, do have my respect, said. She has had suicidal feelings. It has affected her schoolwork and has isolated her from friends. She feels the weight of what you have done. She is fearful to go out in case she sees you. I hope she feels some comfort from what happens today. She is a brave and inspiring young girl. You, on the other hand, lied and lied and lied. Judge Louise Brandon deliberated after Bloor was found guilty and handed him 15 years in prison, not suspended. Finally, a reasonable and proportionate sentence for a sick paedophile cunt. It's about time we start seeing more of this. In fact, I think Judge Louise Brandon, the judge, should be made the judge in all paedophile cases in Liverpool. Thank you, Judge Brandon, for showing this and other cretinous cunts who think that they will get away with this kind of thing, that they could have a very bad day if you're sitting on that day that they appear in court for these disgusting crimes. Manchester's Minshall Street Court, unlike the last story, has allowed a paedophile to walk free after he was found in possession of over 3,000 indecent images of children because, he says, of his marriage breakdown. 66-year-old sick piece of shit Peter Brown was allowed to walk free with just an 18-month community order, 150 hours unpaid work, and ordered to sign a sex offenders register for five years by pedo-protecting judge Mark Saville. Sitting at Minshall Street Crown Court. Brown was at his home in Stockport when the police executed a search warrant, seizing multiple devices, including computers, phones and laptops. Following an analysis of the devices, Brown was found to be in possession of images of children, including 20 Category A images. In the police interview, he told officers he had resorted to watching indecent material following the breakdown of his marriage. He also claimed he didn't download the images, but instead clicked on website links through social media site Tumblr, which led him onto these sites. There was also evidence that he had searched for sentencing guidelines for child pornography offences, the court was told. Exactly what you would expect to find from someone who didn't purposely download the images, wouldn't you say? Brown pleaded guilty to three offences of making indecent images of children. The court heard that the images were accessed between 2002 and 2012. That's some drawn out marriage fucking breakdown. The court heard that there were 20 category images, 98 category B, and 3,143 category C. In mitigation, his defence lawyer, Richard Orme, said, two and a half years ago, he admitted to the offences to the police. It's taken two and a half years to charge him. All that time, he has been concerned about his liberty. He has already served the equivalent of a five-year sentence. He has made a full confession to his family and has not sought to hide anything. He has been humiliated and is a proper candidate to be humiliated. Humiliated. A candidate to be humiliated. No, 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 no. no. He is a candidate for hanging from a fucking lamppost. Sentencing him, Judge Mark Saville said, your defence counsel has made submissions on what can be said for you. This weighs heavily against the abuse of young children. It's vile, unforgivable and it's criminal that you have played your part in that. This went on for quite some time, but there has been no further offending since 2012. I can just be persuaded that the sentence of imprisonment can be suspended. So it's that unforgivable that we'll let you go home. Brown of Ernest Street. 
I'm not sure I said that properly. I better say it again. I'll cut this bit out anyway. But Brown of Ernest Street was also handed a one-month curfew to stay at his address between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. and he was made subject of a sexual harm prevention order for five years. I must remember to cut that bit out so I don't say his name and address twice. 63-year-old sick fuck Stephen Fullerton from Northumberland has been spared jail by Judge Julie Clemetson at Newcastle Crown Court after he repeatedly stood in his living room window, naked, wanking himself off to school children as they passed his home. Children who saw Fullerton's actions informed a teacher who attended the address to investigate and found Fullerton pulling himself off in full view of passers-by. Even after being arrested and released under investigation, Fullerton continued to re-offend and already has a conviction from 2009 for making indecent images of children. Clearly this guy is a sick cunt and needs to be taught that it is not okay. However, even though Judge Julie Clementson said that Fullerton presents a risk to children which needs to be addressed if children are to be protected from him, she thought it appropriate rather than hang the cunt to give him just four months in prison. Suspended for two years. Now let's put this into perspective. I got 18 months suspended for two years for growing some weed. This guy wanks off to children in full view of them, gets arrested, goes right back to doing it while being investigated and gets four fucking months suspended for three offences of outraging public decency and one of exposure. However, it was kind of the judge to make him have to pay a £1,000 and undertake a sex offenders treatment programme, but no mention of whether he was being placed on the sex offenders register. And I genuinely thought female judges would be less inclined to protect these sick fucks as it's less likely for females to be paedophiles, meaning that there's less chance that females in the judiciary are paedophiles themselves, unlike the majority of the male judges protecting their own. Allegedly. Big thank you to every single one of the channel supporters, especially our Patreon supporters. Your support is truly appreciated. And that is all I have for you in today's Too Much For YouTube. Please remember to like, remember to share, comment and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts as no many of you will. Until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Good night, all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, hit that subscribe button up the top there. If you haven't already, become a subscriber. That is support enough. Share the videos, comment, like, it all helps. If you're looking for something else to watch, up top there is my latest video. Down the bottom there is a video that YouTube recommends for you.